Hello and welcome to another video on the SBA questions for your FRKM final examination. I am Dr. Sajad Pathan and today we will look at an important concept for you to remember. Without wasting any further time, let us look at question number one. A young female is brought in after a major trauma. Her airway and breathing were found to be stable except a mild tachypnea. She is stabilized in the emergency department and required three units of O negative packed red blood cells. While you are ready to transfer the patient, the patient's face starts to swell up and there is widespread wheeze. A diagnosis of anaphylaxis has been made and treated accordingly. What could be the underlying etiology for anaphylaxis? Options are mismatched blood transfusion, non-IgE mediated response, previous blood transfusion, type 3 hypersensitive reaction, underlying immune deficiency. I want you to, I want you to take a pause for 10 seconds and decide your answer and then we'll move forward. Let's look at an important association. I want you to make this association from now onwards. Anytime you see anaphylaxis to blood products, anytime you see anaphylaxis to blood products, think about selective IgA deficiency. Selective IgA deficiency is one of the reason, most common reason you get anaphylaxis to blood products. Now, what is selective IgA deficiency? It is one of the most common immune deficiency disorder which may go unnoticed and the frequency is one in a hundred. Some authors even report one in a thousand. The patients may remain asymptomatic with this condition. So therefore, there may be no history. Anytime you see anaphylaxis to blood products or IV immunoglobulins, think of selective IgA deficiency. There may be an association with atopic dermatitis or eczema where the patients have low IgA levels and normal immunoglobulin G and M. Another important association over here, guys, is abnormally false positive beta HCG test. This is like the sheep agglutinin test. The concept here is the heterophil antibody test we use for infectious mononucleosis. Similarly, you get abnormally false positive beta HCG test in this condition. There is a case report where a female underwent laparoscopic surgery for presumed ectopic and later to be found as a selective IgA deficiency. They may have recurrent giardiasis or pulmonary infections and may have history of steatoria. So two key points, anaphylaxis to blood transfusion or false positive beta HCG, that's selective IgA deficiency. So the right answer over here is option E, underlying immune deficiency disorder. So Let's look at the other options. Mismatched blood transfusion doesn't give rise to anaphylaxis. It will give rise to hemolysis. It's type 2 hypersensitive reaction. Non-IgE mediated response is the anaphylactoid reaction. Previous blood transfusion, no. Type 3 is vasculitis. Let's look at a similar question. Five-year-old is brought to the Pediatric assessment unit with fever of five days, swollen, desquamating hands and feet, erythematous tongue and palpable lymph nodes. You guessed it right. This is Kawasaki. She has past history of eczema. An appropriate diagnosis is made and high-dose aspirin and IVIG is administered. Soon after, she develops facial swelling and a wheeze. A diagnosis of anaphylaxis is made and treated. What could be the underlying reason for the anaphylactic? response you know the answer here it is underlying immune deficiency anaphylaxis to IVIG I can make several questions a patient comes in with a dog bite and you or a patient comes in with a tetanus and you give them immunoglobulin and they develop anaphylaxis so this could uh, be framed in many ways so the right answer, you got it. Take home message, anaphylaxis to blood transfusion or IVIG is selective IgA deficiency. Thank you for watching this video. And if you do like the video, please subscribe and share. Stay happy, stay healthy. Peace.